Um, so, Idubs uh, was being made fun of on his own subreddit for having really shitty tattoos. So to epically own the haters, many years ago, by the way, uh, he uh, put on this fake tattoo of the Monster Energy drink. Years later, the official Monster Energy brand account found this um, and said, kind of wish I never saw this. Now you can see this was from December. This is from the turn of the new year in 2021. And Monster Energy just found it. So four years later, more than that, four and a half years later, no, three years later, three and a half years later, uh, Monster Energy retweets this and says, we wish I hadn't seen this, which is pretty funny. So uh, Idubs, not to be dunked on by the Monster Energy brand, published a 22 minutes in our 27 minute long video defending trans athletes a rambling incoherent diatribe about how if you kick men out of women's sports you're actually hurting real women and he bases this off of an extreme minority of uh people who have chromosomal issues completely and totally fucking inapplicable to the question of transgender men in women's sports but he goes on for 27 minutes glazing polishing the girl dick as hard as he possibly can say no really you don't understand and by the way by the way by the way sweaty um, the thing that women look masculine hurts real women, and it also hurts, uh, it's also racist, because when the Olympics were happening back in the day, uh, Americans said that Polish women look really, really masculine and accused them of being men when they lost. And so therefore, uh, women have absolutely no expectation that they should be having an even playing field, and if a man wants to walk into the ring and beat the fuck out of them, uh, he's completely within his rights to do so because we wouldn't want to offend anybody in the process. That's what really matters. Um, he talks about how it's unfair. It's unfair to single out these women with chromosomal issues uh, or who are born in the wrong body but have taken estrogen for 20 million years. It's so unfair to them. But makes no mention, by the way, of if it's unfair to the woman competing. So, to, okay, you want a clip? You know what? I have to go to the bathroom. Let's go right to them in the fucking middle. And I'll play a clip of this so that you can uh, suffer through Idub's transplaining boxing. What it means to have a trans athlete competing as a man or a woman. Each federation is deciding different things. Now, I bring up these federations because the IBA is the federation for boxing. They are specifically the ones who have been working with the International Olympic Committee to put on boxing at the Olympics. Now, ever since, I want to say, the 2016 Olympics, there was some match fixing or accusations of match fixing, and the IOC and the IBA have been butting heads. So Iman and Lin Yuting both competed in the IBA tournament in New Delhi in 2023, and they did well, but after the tournament, their sex test results came back. The sex test for Iman Khalif and Lin Yuting both came back as XY. The argument that I'm making is that in the year of 2023, when these athletes competed and they were, you know, targeted, sex tested, and stripped of their titles, there was no mention of gender eligibility in the handbook. In the letter that Iman receives from the IBA, it cites section 4.2.1 from the technical handbook. That section basically reads like, we reserve the right to make the final decision on a fighter's eligibility. Case closed, basically. And I just think that is so shitty. If you're going to, you know, go through the effort of making a new handbook every year and changing the rules every year, clearly the rules mean something, or they should mean something. Because what's in the handbook for 2024 is basically what they did discreetly in 2023. And none of the fighters had that information. They didn't know what the gender eligibility requirements were. As far as... You know, I think he's going to churn out. I'm going to call it. He's churning out. And I was going to say that, because like with Blow Blacks, he keeps his hair long so that he can pretend to be a dainty girl. I think that Ian, he had his hair long in that disgusting mullet for a while, but he just shaved it. So it's like, well, does he have long hair? Um, 
I think that his shaved head is to facilitate wigs. I think that's what's going on. Because now he can wear like pink, like bubblegum pink wigs. And be like, I'm a pretty girl. I'm a, I'm a pretty girl. And he doesn't have to like deal with his disgusting rat hair mullet as like his girl hair. So he knows that looks bad. So the wig is like a, is a the bald head lets him dress up how he wants. It's going to happen, bro. He's going to, he's going to have, he's going to be so utterly and totally emotionally and mentally compromised by the combination of psychotropic drugs that he takes and Anisa skull fucking him in his head that he will never see himself as a man again. And the only way he'll get off is getting fucked in the ass. It's going to happen. I'm telling you. Thank you for watching this clip. This is Perspicacity. Remember to like and subscribe.